Good morning, everyone. And uh, at the outset, let me thank everyone at Columbia University for hosting us today. In the interest of full disclosure, I think there are three graduate degrees in my extended family from Columbia. I do not have any of them, so I don't think there's a real conflict. Um, as we all know, Columbia has a long and proud history in our city, and Columbia Engineering in particular really has played a crucial role in shaping New York's growth and fueling our progress. Back in the 18th century, Columbia trained engineers refined the technology that made us a powerhouse in the steamship and railroad industries. And at the turn of the last century, Columbia gave New York the first chief engineer of our pioneering subway system. Uh, Columbia engineers are going to help power a strong and diversified New York economy in the 21st century as well. And that's what the dynamic partnership they were announcing today is all about. It is the newest element in the implied sciences initiative that is by far the largest and most far-reaching economic development effort city government has undertaken in modern memory. And this latest partnership will create thousands of jobs and billions of dollars in economic activity in the years to come. It will encourage the growth of the tech sector in northern Manhattan and in the process help solidify our city's leadership in the innovation economy for decades to come. Columbia's Fu Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Sciences is already a nationally recognized center of excellent education and engineering innovation. And in recent years, it has continued to rise in independent academic rankings. And that's true despite the fact that it currently has one of the smallest, although most talented, faculties of any major engineering school. And the partnership that we're launching today will help Columbia launch a new Institute for Data Sciences and Engineering. Staffing the institute will increase the size of Columbia's engineering and data science faculty by 75 professors, most of them at the engineering school. And that will give Columbia a faculty that matches in size as well as quality the faculties at other top engineering schools. Columbia is committed to contribute, uh, committing to contribute at least $80 million in private investment to this project, and much of that investment will go to dramatically expanding and upgrading its engineering facilities at this building and at other locations in Morningside Heights and Washington Heights to accommodate the new institute. Now, to accomplish those goals, the city is agreeing to provide Columbia with $15 million over the next few decades. For its part, Columbia will, by 2016, create new applied science fa facilities in the university's existing buildings and also hire 75 new professors by 2030. The city's assistance, which is contingent on Columbia reaching these benchmarks, is designed to help Columbia meet its strong need for new space and also attract world-class engineering talent. And the talent attracted to this Institute for Data Sciences and engineering will create five centers crucial to strengthening and broadening New York City's economy. They will be, uh, one, a new media center focused on digital and social media, two, a smart city center that will address such vital questions as creating green infrastructure and smart grid power technology, three, a health analytics center that will coordinate research in medicine and biology with computer sciences and applied mathematics, for a cybersecurity center focused on data security and privacy, and five, a financial analytics center uh, devoted to applying engineering principles to financial markets. Now, there's every reason to believe that the Institute will produce a flood of innovations in these areas, and we expect the return on the city's investment in the Institute to be substantial. Uh, we project that the Institute will create more than 4,500 jobs over the next three decades, most of them resulting from the roughly 100 startup firms expected to spin off from the research that will be done here. The Institute is expected to have a nearly $4 billion impact on our economy and generate nearly $150 million in city tax revenue, a figure some 10 times greater than our initial investment. And creating that kind of dramatic, transformative economic impact is precisely why well over a year ago we challenged universities from near and far 
to submit proposals for establishing or expanding their presence in the applied sciences here in our city. The responses from Columbia and from other schools were more exciting and riper with potential than we ever dreamed they would be, and the steps we've taken to help realize that potential with our partnerships with Cornell NYC Tech and a consortium headed by NYU and now with Columbia will have powerful economic benefits for New Yorkers for decades to come. Taken together, these three projects will dramatically increase the size and quality of the engineering faculty and graduate students in New York City. And we also expect them to create more than 22,000 construction jobs, nearly 26,000 permanent jobs, produce more than $33 billion in economic activity, and generate $2.2 billion in tax revenue for the city over the next 34 years. And that's what makes this far and away the most ambitious economic development effort the city has undertaken in decades. And we're just delighted that Columbia is going to be such a big part of it. While we continue to cast a wide net in search of engineering talent, we also welcome this opportunity to work more closely with one of our top hometown teams. So on that note, let me ask Columbia University President Lee Bollinger to comment on the new partnership. Lee. Thank you, Mayor Bloomberg and Deputy Mayor Robert Steele, Bob Steele, and Seth Pinsky. Uh, let me begin by recognizing John Coatsworth, our provost, and the senior executive vice president, Robert Kasdan, both of whom who have been instrumental in bringing about today's uh, announcement. Also, Joe Iannuso, who's really worked on the buildings, the space, and the details of all of that, which are tremendous. I also want to recognize the interim dean of uh, the School of Engineering and Applied Science, Don Goldfarb, who's been a beloved member of the faculty since 1982, Professor Kathy McEwen, who will serve as the founding director, and uh, Vice Dean Trish Culligan, Associate Director of Columbia's new Institute for Data Sciences and Engineering. <clears throat> Although the institute we're announcing today involves a total of eight Columbia schools uh, and both parts of our campus, including the Medical Center, I want to focus our attention on the accomplished faculty of our School of Engineering and Applied Science, whose pioneering research has shaped the core of our proposal for the new institute to address the challenges of our data-rich society. Their acknowledged excellence has lifted the school to near the top tier over the past decade, an ascent that has been limited only by the amount of space available to do their work uh, and a much smaller scale than our leading peers. Today, the mayor and his EDC team are making it possible for us to take rapid new steps beyond the past in terms of new and improved research space and expanding the number of our faculty and students. A year and a half ago, the mayor gave a new focus to the conversation about the essential role of great universities in our city's economic future, the quality and volume of academic and institutional planning that has been spurred by the mayor's request for applied science proposals really was extraordinary. We can all celebrate the fact that Roosevelt Island will allow our colleagues at Cornell and Technion to expand in New York, and that our friends in NYU will have a new space in downtown Brooklyn. When you consider cities in America as the leadership of the modern knowledge economy, everyone realizes or should realize that it is strong universities that are the basis of innovation. For us, it was more than a century ago that Columbia moved from Midtown Manhattan to this campus on Morningside Heights and grew to become one of the world's great, greatest universities, I believe, in 1960, 65, it was indisputably the greatest university on the planet. And just as New York City became one of the great world cities, so it was true of Columbia, and there is no coincidence in that. So today, out the windows behind me, a few blocks up Broadway is one of the world, New York's city's largest construction projects rising on what was during an earlier time a city's the, one of the city's old industrial zones now it's a 17 acre site 
of Columbia's interdisciplinary campus of this new century. This, what you're in now, is the last building of the Morningside Heights campus begun a century ago. We've made a long-term commitment with the city's assistance to build uh, 7 million square feet of new campus over the next century. This was the first and largest of several major higher education projects launched under the Bloomberg administration. And now taking shape because of his support is a vision of a sustainable urban future that recently earned the very first LEED Platinum rating for any campus plan in the United States and New York City's first LEED Platinum for neighborhood development. For a glimpse of a green and interdisciplinary future, you need look no further than this building, so-called the Northwest Corner Building, because we're still looking for a donor, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> and there were, it's an award-winning structure in its own right that is both physically open to and connected to the community that is our home. As the mayor and as some of you have already seen this morning, our new Data Sciences Institute will be up and running quickly because we are investing in new and improved research space within our existing campus buildings, including this one here. Right upstairs from us on the 10th and 14th floors where there will be laboratories, offices, and workstations for some 13 faculty and 65 doctoral students. Also in the mud building just across the way here, we will have new space. And further uptown at the Audubon Biomedical Research Building at Columbia's Medical Center, we will have the new Institute's Health Analytics Center led by Dr. Andrea Califano. The creativity and productivity of the Data Sciences Institute's five centers will be ignited by collaborations that are possible only because we are located here within the larger university community. When you ask questions about data and how do you turn data into meaningful information, you are asking questions that every part of the university, from philosophy to humanities to health to law, as well as engineering and science, need to answer. And that's why we have it here in a university. And if you want to know more about the interdisciplinary work that our basic scientists and engineers are already doing together in this remarkable building, our engineering school has actually an app for that. The key point is that this kind of dynamic intellectual mix defines not just a great university like Columbia, but the genius of New York City itself. And perhaps the most encouraging thing about this digital age when information technology in theory allows us to live and work together is that talented people are still choosing to come together in real communities, not just virtual ones. That special dynamism has long defined New York and it is alive and well today in our tech sector um, and among our young entrepreneurs. Look at the local startup culture that's taking off driven by New York City's historic strength in media, finance, and biomedical research. Mayer is the founder of a little financial data and journalism business that's done pretty well. I know you'll appreciate that New York's new generation of tech entrepreneurs include talented students from across many fields, including our journalism school, which itself is now a center for exploring the digital future of news media and offers innovative dual degree programs with our School of Engineering. These young innovators are spurred on by faculty members like Professor of Applied Mathematics Chris Wiggins and by the local Hack NY nonprofit he founded and has connected to so many talented young entrepreneurs and developers in New York. And that effort is exemplified by such former students as the co-founders of Code Academy, one of whom Zach Zims is here with us today, Mr. Mayor, to fulfill your tweeted New Year's resolution to learn coding yourself. For today, let me thank you for this $15 million in support that will jumpstart our Data Sciences Institute and help propel our engineering school even higher on its impressive trajectory in the years ahead in ways that will continue to expand Columbia's historic commitment to being both in and of 
the city of New York. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Lee, thank you. I was looking around for a donor. I actually thought our borough president would be a nice thing for he and his wife to do to make a gift and name the school. Probably be good for your political career and, you know, I mean, you'd have your name in Manhattan. I'll split it with you. Uh, okay. <laughs> if you, yet. Put, you put the first up and I'll put back. We'll talk about this afterwards. The uh, major credit for making our Applied Sciences Initiative a success really does belong to two officials in our administration, and both are here with us today. Deputy Mayor for Economic Development, Bob Steele, and the President of the City's Economic Development Corporation, Seth Pinsky. Uh, so at this point, uh, I'd like to ask both of them to comment on this new partnership with Columbia, starting with Deputy Mayor Steele. Bob. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and uh, congratulations to Columbia University and President Bollinger on this momentous announcement. Um, you know, from its earliest days at King's College, when King's College was a neighbor to City Hall, Columbia has had a special role in the city of New York. Uh, you saw earlier that the full name was on the video where it's described as Columbia University in the city of New York, uh, which makes that especially appropriate today. In many ways, Columbia's continued growth and development from lower Manhattan moving north has mirrored New York City's own growth and development. The significant expansion of Columbia's engineering school is just the latest chapter in the long history of Columbia's fueling of the academic, intellectual, and economic life of New York City. We said from the beginning of the Applied Sciences competition which began just a short year and a half ago in December of 2010, that New York City's challenge wasn't that we didn't have excellent engineering programs. That wasn't the issue. We do have great programs at NYU, at CUNY, and also right here at Columbia, the highest ranked engineering program in New York City today. But that's not enough. Our challenge was that relative to the size of our economy, uh, and the importance of science and engineering to the economy of the future as the mayor encouraged us to look ahead, we did not have enough engineering talent here in our city. And so today's announcement that the best ranked engineering program in the city today, Columbia, will be growing its engineering faculty by almost 50 percent is outstanding news for all of the city. Altogether, thanks to Mayor Bloomberg's vision for growing and strengthening New York's applied sciences and engineering capabilities, the number of engineering faculty and students will more than double over the next few years. It's a remarkable accomplishment serving to transform the city's economy and position New York City for outperformance in the decades and centuries to come. Columbia University's investment in applied sciences and engineering will also mean that Morningside Heights and yes, Manhattanville are now poised to join neighborhoods that we think of like Flatiron, Dumbo, Chelsea, and Long Island City as really emerging tech centers that can serve as really crucibles for where the economic growth should be in the future. And it means that jobs and investments in these neighborhoods, not just PhDs, although they're okay, but also for people who will work at the businesses supported by the new tech companies that will spring from the research of Columbia's expanded engineering program. This morning announcement is also the latest example of Mayor Bloomberg's commitment to supporting the growth and expansion of universities and academic medical centers. These anchor institutions are major economic engines, not just academic engines, but economic engines. And from Fordham to Columbia to CUNY to NYU and to last week's announcement of the latest example of New York's Genome Center, making sure that these institutions have the room to grow and compete has been a major focus of Mayor Bloomberg's plans. With perhaps no better example than the administration's support in 2007, for Columbia's Manhattanville expansion. Before I turn it back to the mayor, let me just recognize a few of the people that we've been so honored to work with on this project. First of all, the president of Columbia has provided incredible leadership for Columbia and for New York City in the last decade, and we were pleased and really proud to work with him and his strong push. Second also, too, uh, Columbia Senior Executive Vice President Robert Kasdan has been committed to this project from the beginning and recognized what a great opportunity could be both for Columbia and for New York City. Let me also thank Speaker Quinn and her colleagues in the Council for their support for the Applied Science Project overall. 
Throughout the selection process, the city was also enabled and advised by a fantastic group of private sector and academic leaders who helped us think about the many issues, including Kathy Wild, who's here today as the president of the New York City Partnership. And finally, let me just take a second to thank my colleagues from the city, uh, President Penske of EDC, who's going to be speaking after me, and Eugene Lee from the mayor's office, both of whom were real drivers of this project. Last weekend, in looking through the papers, you saw a quote from one senior Google executive that said, quote, New York City has definitely become the new mecca for software engineers, unquote. And let's keep that fire burning and make sure that it drives the economy as we know it should. Congratulations to Columbia and New York City. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bob, thank you. And uh, let me ask Seth Pinsky to enlarge really on how this project fits with our overall strategy of diversifying New York's economy, Seth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Steele. Uh, congratulations to President Bollinger, to Robert Kasdan and John Coatsworth, to Dean Goldfarb and Professor McEwen and the entire Columbia team. I also wanted to thank the team at EDC, David Ehrenberg and Scott Solish, who worked so hard uh, to make this project a reality. I think that this is really a great day, not just for Columbia, but for the entire city of New York. If you think back a year and a half ago to when we started the Applied Sciences competition, our stated goal was to increase significantly the city's capacity in applied science and engineering and to work to transform the city's economy for the 21st century. And this announcement today shows that the city is taking yet another step towards achieving this very important goal. Columbia has obviously been a leader for many, many years in science and engineering. And one statistic that I think illustrates just what kind of progress the university has been making is the fact that just in the last decade, in the US News and World Report rankings, Columbia's engineering school has jumped from 31st in the country to 16th, by far the largest increase of any school in the top uh, group of engineering schools in the United States. And this partnership that we're striking today will allow Columbia to build on this progress. It will create more academic space, it will attract more of the best and the brightest faculty members and students, and it will allow Columbia to focus on promising areas of research and development, both to advance human knowledge and also to expand the economy. The Applied Sciences Initiative that we launched 18 months ago continues to surpass all of our expectations, and thanks to the mayor and deputy mayor Steele and their leadership, New York City is today well on its way to becoming the global center for innovation in the 21st century. So let me just conclude by saying that I am thrilled by this announcement, I am thrilled by this partnership, and we look forward to many more announcements on this front and, and others in the coming months. Thank you. Seth, thank you. And let me just say once again, just so people really do understand, the impact of this proposal, which came from Bob and Seth and their staffs, really is going to change New York for decades. I don't know there's any been one event that has the potential to do as much for our future as what these two guys and their staffs have come up with. So I just wanted to once again say thank you to both of you. Uh, let me ask uh, Dean Donald Goldfarb of the Columbia School of Engineering and Applied Sciences to tell us a little more about what this partnership is going to mean for the school. Sure. Donald? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've been a member of uh, Columbia's engineering faculty for 30 years. Uh, the school is constantly improving uh, and producing amazing results in, in field after field. Uh, today, with the announcement of the Institute for Data Sciences and Engineering, um, this is probably the most exciting moment uh, that I can think of in the school's 150-year history. And uh, the, the future has never looked brighter. To understand the value uh, this institute will bring to the engineering school and to Columbia, uh, the, the university as a whole, uh, it's necessary to consider for a moment uh, some history uh, and, and the current state of the school. In terms of research, research expenditures per faculty, uh, in terms of percentage of faculty members who are members of the National Academies of Science and Engineering, uh, Columbia ranks in the very, very top uh, group of the nation's engineering schools. Uh, we've seen dramatic growth uh, in the recent decade in uh, announcements of research inventions, uh, their licensing, 
and the quality of our students, both graduate and undergraduate, is truly exceptional. Mayor Bloomberg's announcement and the city's support for the Data Science Institute means that the only constraint that prevents Columbia Engineering from being in the very, very top echelon of engineering schools in overall ranking, that is our small size relative to our peers, will essentially be overcome. Uh, we expect that with this investment that the future uh, contributions of the faculty and the students who, who we train will lead to unanticipated discoveries that will be of tremendous value to society. Uh, over time, the Institute will grow by an addition of 44,000 square feet of space, of academic space and research space, and we anticipate the addition of 75 new faculty in data science, engineering, and related fields. Uh, we're looking forward with great excitement to the new colleagues who will join us and the collaborative and interdisciplinary research that, that will uh, take place in the Institute, many of it, much of it, in this building. Uh, in this very impressive building, 10th floor and the uh, so-called beacon, uh, which we expect to uh, renovate to accommodate the, the research needs of big data. In my own research, which is on the development of optimization algorithms uh, for machine learning problems, which I won't go into, um, <laughs> fortunately, uh, I encounter problems with enormous volumes of data. I mean, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of, of pieces of data to solve one problem. And uh, I'm familiar, consequently, with the uh, challenges and uh, possibilities of, of dealing with uh, data science. Uh, I have every confidence that the research that we're proposing in this institute, that is in uh, new media, smart cities, health analytics, uh, financial analytics, and uh, cybersecurity, that we will, as a result, come up with amazing scientific breakthroughs uh, that will be of tremendous value to society and uh, create entrepreneurial uh, you know, new companies and, and tremendously increase the entrepreneurial economy of, of the city. Um, another reason for my confidence in the future is the faculty of the School of Engineering. We, in the past, we've always, you know, we've had a faculty that have led to uh, the creation of FM radio, to X-ray photography, more recently to efficient genomic sequencing and the development of smartphones but it is the current faculty that are, I'm incredibly proud of and who uh, are going to be the foundation for the, for the future of the Institute. Uh, one very visual example of that is um, uh, Professor Eitan Grinspun, who happens to be sitting right here. Eitan, stand up. <laughs> Show your face. Um, who uh, works on uh, computer graphics algorithms, um, and many of you, I'm sure, have seen actually the results of his work, uh, if you take your children to movies that have anim you know, animation movies. And th th his work has tremendous uh, implications, not just for Hollywood, but for other areas as well. And so we now are going to show you a little, a very brief uh, clip of uh, some of Eitan's works. My name is Ethan Greenspoon, and I'm Associate Professor of Computer Science here at Columbia Engineering. And I'm also the director of the Columbia Computer Graphics Group. In computer animation, as the artist models the motion or animates the motion of the character in ways that gives expressive gestures, tells a story, talks about surprise, panic, anticipation, it's nice if the clothing that, the, that is worn over the character follows the laws of physics because if it doesn't look realistic at all it becomes a distraction so by teaming up with the collaborating research scientist at Disney we developed technologies that allow a computer to plow ahead 
even during the most challenging scenarios. And that technology was first used in the film Tangled that was released in 2010 and now exists in the Disney pipeline for use in all the future movies after that. So we've been teaming up with these wonderful uh, physicists and some of them are theoretical physicists, others are experimentalists and they work in the lab. And what we bring into the table is computer software that can predict physical motion. Some of the uh, physicists that we're working with are using our software together with their experiments to predict simple problems such as how does a piece of spaghetti coil as it falls on a table. If you can understand how a piece of spaghetti coils, then you've taken the first step towards laying down transoceanic cables in a way that they don't knot up as they fall on the ocean floor. And if you go from really huge to really tiny, then you can also create stretchable microelectronics because you can drop tiny little metal wires onto a small microscopic substrate in such a way that it makes a zigzag pattern that allows it to be more stretchy. And it's very exciting for us to be able to develop technologies that are pleasing to the eye but also helping to advance technology in all these exciting ways. <laughs> thank you, Eitan. Uh, I want to thank the mayor, President Bollinger, and all in the university administration for providing us with more applied research space and for uh, providing us with the means to, uh, to hire additional faculty and bring in exceptional graduate students. Um, with these investments, it's impossible not to be incredibly optimistic about our future. Thank you. Donald, thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the newly named director of the Institute for Data Sciences and Engineering, uh, Professor Kathy McEwen, who is a past chair of the Department of Computer Sciences and who was the first woman to chair a department at Columbia Engineering. She is, you should know, a leading scholar and researcher in the field of natural language processing and has received many awards for her research and teaching, including a faculty award for women from the National Science Foundation. And as Lee and David have pointed out, it's worth noting that the associate director at the Institute will be another very accomplished female member of the engineering staff, Patricia Culligan. Uh, Professor McEwen, congratulations, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. I want to thank Mayor Bloomberg for his support for the Institute for Data Science and Engineering and for his support of engineering in general in the city. His initiative will enable real advances in the field. I'd also like to thank President Bollinger for supporting and encouraging our work in the Institute. I'm particularly appreciative of the work that Provost John Coatsworth and Senior Executive Vice President Robert Kasdan did in helping us through the proposal process. I'm very excited about the interdisciplinary work that we'll be addressing in the Institute, and I'm personally looking forward to working closely with my Associate Director, Trish Culligan. Trish. I want to give you an idea of the kinds of projects uh, that we will be pursue by focusing in on two of the institutes of uh, two of the centers of the institute's five centers, new media and smart cities. In the Center for New Media, we'll develop systems for analyzing the massive amounts of online media, whether text, speech, image, or video. My research group will be developing systems to detect influence in social media including identifying when people express opinions and how they persuade each other. Uh, this research holds great relevance uh, to understanding the characteristics of successful political campaigns and advertising strategies. In related research, Professor Julia Hirschberg is using emotion detection in systems that will make it possible to identify online hate speech. And Professor Shifu Chang is addressing challenges in the world of online video, where over four billion videos are viewed every day by people on YouTube and other sites. 
he's exploring using information uh, from the multiple modalities that are associated with video, uh, such as audio, visual, and text, um, and how they can be combined to search for content in video. His research will also enable insights into how pr presentations of personalized video uh, programs can be developed depending on the interests of users. As part of a new collaboration with Columbia's School of Journalism and Stanford University, Professor Chang is developing an intelligent TV system which will provide real-time personalized TV news services. Within our Smart City Center, an advanced sensor lab will be developing technology for gathering information from urban environments. Professors uh, John Kamisis, Peter Kingett, uh, let's see, Xiaodong Wang, Dan Rubenstein, and Gil Sussman will be working on advanced low-powered sensors that will be able to monitor objects in everyday settings. Um, this can be used in disasters, for example, to signal when objects are moved or destroyed, thus enabling a much more rapid response in emergency situations to the exact location in need. Another professor in our Smart Cities Center, Professor Vijay Modi, um, is using a data-driven approach to improve energy efficiency in the city. He notes that most people are either unable or unwilling to adjust thermostat settings, depending on their work schedules, the schedules of their children, or changes in the weather. In a data-driven environment, however, uh, such constant manually, manual monitoring will not be necessary. Instead, a smart device will learn our very specific personal needs and habits and adjust thermostats automatically, and in the process, um, greatly conserving energy. Um, on the screen behind me, I think, yes, there you are. Um, you will see Professor Modi's data-informed model of energy usage in New York City's buildings. This is the product of research conducted in collaboration with the City of New York. These are just some of the exciting examples of how the Institute's discoveries will establish a foundation on which partnerships with industry can be built, startups will be launched, and research applied to the marketplace. Thank you to everyone involved who has made the Institute possible and brought us to this day. Thank you. Professor, thank you. Uh, next up, uh, a congressman who has for more decades than anybody can remember worked very hard for the city, Congressman Charlie Rangel. Charlie? Dr. Bollinger, my colleagues in government, uh, Mr. Mayor, when you have uh, endorsed me for re-election, you always mention that I bring home the resources that's necessary for our great city. But I don't have to tell you, you have to come from a great city with a great mayor, with a great university that does great things that make it possible for you to do this. And I want to thank this mayor as well as past former Deputy Mayor Doktorov for what they did to make certain that the partner that is not here today, that is our kids, our students, and our young people, were included as we had this, I think Vice President Biden said it best, this is one big expletive deleted deal. This is one of the most exciting things that could happen to any community, to any great city. And Dr. Roth made certain with the mayor's support that our community was a part of that deal. And so you were talking about smart cities. As soon as I leave here, I'll find more about it because I want these smart cities to get one professor to be able to say that we are smart enough and we have $33 billion that we're going to make certain that kids from this community will be smart enough 
when they enter kindergarten to know that the dreams that we have for Columbia, our city, and our great country can be fulfilled by them. This is what the President is talking about during a time of economic depression, that we are thinking about the next century, the dreams, the investment. And so while the mayor and uh, Mr. Stringer fight over the name of this building, and I'm out of the school naming business now, <laughs> I hope that we also, and then of course you're given 15 million and they got 33 billion, so put me down for 15, 20 bucks so that I get in the competition. But we need scholarships, we need money, we need kids that can start off. A part of these original agreement was start Stringer, our great uh, Linares, Glimmer Linares, Guy Brewer, the educational czar himself, Councilman Jackson, and all of this community, we are so proud that generations that follow would be able to say that we stood with these giants as New York City, as Columbia moved forward in the international field so everyone would know one, once and for all, we're taking a small step back, but we are planning for the greatest economic recovery ever. How proud I am to represent this great community and to know our kids who are not standing here are going to be a part of this great economic success. Thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Mayor. You're the greatest. Thank you, Charlie. And you can rest assured that the Columbia Development Office will be calling you this afternoon for that 15 or $20. <laughs> it all adds up. I don't think we need uh, another introduction of the great borough president, uh, Scott Stringer. So without further ado, here he is. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, you can imagine how exciting I, I am today uh, with the uh, Stringer Bloomberg uh, Institute. <laughs> we might want to do it alphabetically. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say. No. <laughs> um, but, but seriously, I want to really commend the mayor and this administration. It wasn't that long ago that we were at the opening of the, uh, the announcement of the Cornell Techion uh, Roosevelt Island uh, dream that you put forth. And a lot of people felt, including myself, that this would be an anchor for all university expansion to come and would continue to make New York City the magnet city it's always been. But no one could really have understood truly that when you add in NYU and CUNY and today Columbia, you are really building out a capacity that will be unmatched by any city in the world. And we will continue to create big dreams here because we've now put together the space, the professors, the economic opportunity to make sure that we will lead in this category of data sciences and engineering. I also want to thank Columbia University because six and a half years ago when I started as borough president, they talked a lot of uh, President Bollinger and Mr. Kazan and others talked a lot about what university expansion up here would mean for people in our neighborhood. And Congressman Rangel knows all too well how we have to balance the needs of expansion with community. And I am so proud, Mr. Mayor, that Columbia and the City Planning Commission are all now working collaboratively, not just to finish Columbia expansion, but to create a rezoning beyond the footprint that's going to make sure that the people who built up this community get to stay here. And so many of those kids are going to come to this school, this institute, and do amazing things because we put planning and collaboration and working together. Put all that, uh, when we do that all, there's no, nothing that can beat this city. And I'm very proud to stand here today after six and a half years and say thank you very much on behalf of the Morningside Heights community to Columbia and to you and for our city. Thank you. Okay. Scott, thank you. Uh, next, uh, City Council Member Robert Jackson. Robert. <clears throat> Mayor Bloomberg, let me thank you and all of the people involved in bringing us to where we are today. And obviously, this is a long-term investment, and this is just the beginning. And I say to you, as a member of the City Council, the Chair of the Education Committee, uh, this is extremely important, an investment in the future of, of science, engineering, and technology here in Northern Manhattan. As you know, I represent the Manhattanville campus that's going to be built in the next few years. <clears throat> and also Northern Manhattan, Dr. Guillermo Linares represents the Audubon campus. And so 
an investment by Columbia and the City of New York coming together with community leaders such as our Congress member and all of the electors to ensure that Northern Manhattan is incorporated in this as far as jobs and opportunities for the people that we represent. Extremely important. If not, then we will be saying, wait a minute, you're isolating Columbia from the community. This here today says the community and Columbia are working together and that's what life is about. United we stand, divided we fall. Thank you. Robert, thank you. And next, Councilwoman Gail Brewer. Gail. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, for the beginning of this decade in the City Council, I chaired the Technology Committee. And what we learned, no surprise to anyone, over and over again was the need for engineers. We went to all five boroughs and had hearings. And of course, now the mayor and his amazing team, along with Columbia, are pulling that off. I also want to uh, say how important and excited I am because the mayor in his press release mentioned the work done by the Center for an Urban Future. They have been talking about this issue for a long time also. And finally, I just want to indicate, uh, Mayor, how great your staff is because uh, at a recent uh, NASA astrophysics event, the deputy mayor was called cool and he got a standing ovation after that was stated. Thank you very much. I don't know whether his wife knows that or whether she really cares, but we'll have to find out. Uh, Assemblyman Guillermo Bonares. Guillermo? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to be here to uh, join my colleagues in government and acknowledging your leadership and that of your team and President Bollinger, uh, the School of Engineering. Uh, in this, uh, great day for the city of New York. As an immigrant uh, who is a product of the public schools, uh, CUNY, uh, and also a graduate uh, with my doctor from this institution, Columbia University, I have to say that one of the things that promises most uh, with this initiative is that uh, we have in this city the, the most diverse city in the world, uh, and with it, uh, representation from all countries across the world. And that brings the greatest in innovation to the greatest minds. And I hope that this initiative uh, can help us take young talent uh, that we have in our schools throughout uh, and be able to tap and nurture them uh, to be able uh, to take us to the next level. Uh, I think that this is a great initiative uh, that promises much, uh, but particularly to tap on the diverse talents that we have in this city. And I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor and Columbia University uh, for bringing this forward. And I, I think we, we as communities that surround this great institution uh, and are part of this city uh, promise much with this type of initiative and it very, will bring great results for us. Thank you, Mayor. Guillermo, yeah, no, thank you. And uh, before taking questions, let me just summarize today's announcement for our Spanish-speaking New Yorkers. Estamos empezando un colaboración tecnología con la Universidad de Colombia para crear nuevos trabajos y generar billones de dólares en activos actividad económica en el Alto Manhattan. And with that